This is a video on trig substitution. While these problems are in terms of x, their display is such that without the aid of trig substitution or someone having done it prior and putting it in a table, you would not be able to uh, figure out these problems. So I'm going to show you how you can figure out these problems using trig identities. There are only about four identities that you need to really know. Uh, sine, um, the sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. We want to break that up into uh, solving for sine squared and also solving for cosine squared. Then tangent squared plus one is secant squared and secant squared minus one is tangent squared. And we don't really need any more than those. Uh, those will suffice, as you will see, for most of the problems we're going to be looking at. When you're trying to look at a problem and figuring out what uh, trig identity to use, look at, the um, under the radical, the number minus the variable squared, and number minus variable squared will fit with 1 minus sine squared, except instead of a 1, we have 25. So our first step is to identify the substitution for x. And 25 has to become a 1, so we're going to manipulate the numbers to make it a 1 as follows. First, you factor out the 25. That will leave you with 1 minus x squared over 25. The square root of 25 is 5 leaving you with 1 minus x over 5 quantity squared and then pull out the 5 and you have your 1 minus and that's what you substitute for sine x over 5. So that's your first thing to write down is that sine of theta is x over 5. Now the next thing we have to do is take the derivative of that because we need a d theta. So cosine theta d theta is the derivative of sine theta and 1 -fifth dx is the derivative of x over 5. We can also write that as 5 cosine theta d theta is our dx. And the next thing we want to do is substitute into the integral and this is continued on the next slide. Step 2, we want to make our substitutions. So we're going to start with um, our integral right here where we have 1 minus sine squared theta for our beginning integral and then we have d theta which is cosine theta d theta. 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta and the derivative of that will be cosine, I mean the square root of that will be cosine theta. So we have cosine theta times cosine theta which is cosine squared theta. And we just learned how to take care of that uh, in a previous section. Uh, we have to use the double angle identities. And for cosine squared, we use the 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 d theta. So we follow along. We have 25 over 2. And we separate um, the 1 half, bring it out. And that leaves us with the integral of just d theta for the 1 and the integral of cosine 2 theta d theta for the second integral. Now, the first integral, of course, is just going to be theta, so that's easy to do. The second integral, uh, we need a 2 d theta, so we bring out a two, uh, we have to divide that out, so that's how, why the 25 has became a 25 fourths. And then we can integrate now the cosine of 2 theta. So our final answer is 25 halves theta plus 25 fourths sine of 2 theta. Our next step now is to draw a right triangle and figure out the sides for the right triangle in terms of x. <clears throat> the original problem was in terms of x. The final answer should be in terms of x. So we can put theta anywhere we want, but I've, I've put it down here in the right-hand corner. And remember the sine of x is x over 5, which is opposite over hypotenuse. 
So there's your opposite side, there's your hypotenuse, and by using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the other side has to be 25, the square root of 25 minus x squared. After we do all that, then we come down to um, solving um, for the final answer. Where's our, let's see, we have 25 halves theta. Uh, that will be the arc sine of x over 5. And we have 25 fourth sine of 2 theta. But we're going to need to change that to 2 sine theta cosine theta because our triangle is in terms of theta, not 2 theta. So we want to um, expand sine 2 theta. And so that's what we've done. So the sine of 2 theta, here's your 2, here's your sine theta value, which is x over 5, and your cosine theta value is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and so that would be this. The final answer then becomes 25 halves times the arc sine of x over 5 plus x times the square root of 25 minus x squared over 2 plus a constant. And while it's not fun maybe to do this, it's a good idea, especially on test, to maybe check your answer if you have the time by taking the derivative and seeing if you get the original problem. I didn't say checking the derivative would be easy, but let's try it. Here's the original problem right here. We have the answer to it, 25 halves arc sine x over 5 plus x times the square root of 25 minus x squared over 2 plus a constant. And what we want to do is take the derivative of this right-hand side and see if we get the original problem back. All right, how do we take the derivative of 25 halves arc sine x over 5? Well, fortunately, there's a formula for that. Usually you've learned it, maybe you've forgotten it. But if you think of x over 5 as being u, then the numerator would be u prime, which is one-fifth. Uh, the constant just comes along, so the 25 halves just comes along, and then you have one-fifth, which is u prime, and then you have the square root of one minus u squared. So that's uh, the formula for what the arc sine derivative is. Now, for the second one, this one, we have two functions, x and the square root of 25 minus x squared. Now, I would put the x over 2 together and treat that as the first function and the square root as the second function. So that's what I did. And I used the product rule. So we have the first, x over 2, times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is 1 half. And now that we've got the derivatives done, it's just a matter of cleaning it up. So uh, if you follow the cleanup process, we end up with 5 over 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 25 plus x over 2 times 1 half times 25 minus x squared to the minus 1 half times a minus 2x plus 1 half times the square root of 25 minus x squared. And then just going through and simplifying, I'll just leave that for you to look at we do end up with the original problem. So it takes a little while. You can see um, it's not simple. The algebra is gets complex, but if you persevere and you've done everything correctly and you've got the right answer, then you'll come out with the right result. In this problem, we have x squared plus 25 under the radical. And that would be like variable squared plus number. All right, variable squared plus number is similar to tangent theta plus 1, or tangent squared theta plus 1. But again, we have to manipulate to get that 1 in place of the 25. After you've done a few of these, you'll see that the steps are pretty repetitious, but you'll get used to them. All right, so we pull out the 25, which gives us x over 5, quantity squared, plus 1. We pull out the 25 as a 5, and so we have x over 5 squared plus 1. 
which we're going to now let tangent theta be x over 5. We find the derivative of that, which would be 5 secant squared theta as our dx. Making our substitution 1 over the square root of x over 5 quantity squared plus 1. We have 1 over the square root of tangent squared theta plus 1 and times d theta, which is 5 secant squared d theta. This gives us 5 times the integral of secant squared theta over the square root of secant squared theta, which ends up as 5 secant squared theta over secant theta, d theta, which turns out to be 5 secant theta d theta. And for that, I used the table because most of us, I probably don't uh, memorize all the way through uh, for the trig functions past, I don't even know if we've memorized through tangent, but anyway, secant theta is 5 ln secant theta plus tangent theta. Again, we're not done, but we've got the integral done, and now it's a matter of getting it back into x. Okay, so the things we need to know here are what did we substitute for tangent theta and what is the integral uh, answer. So we have those two things up here and now we draw our right triangle, place our theta in one of the acute angles and knowing that tangent is the opposite over the adjacent we write x over 5 and then with the Pythagorean theorem we figure out the hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus 25. All right, the next thing we do is figure out what the secant of theta would be, and the secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent side, so that would be that. And of course, tangent theta is x over 5, as stated up at the beginning, or by using the triangle, either one. And we can combine those into one fraction as x plus the square root of x squared plus 25 over 5, and it's the natural log of that times 5 plus a constant. For example 3 we have looks more complicated 25x squared minus 36 but basically it's variable squared minus a number. So if you look at your trig identities that would correspond to secant squared theta minus 1. Again there's some manipulation that's going to have to be done to get a 1 where 36 now lies and we'll see that in a minute. Okay, the first thing we do is we factor out 36. 36 would leave you with 25 and since uh, 5 squared is 25 I've gone ahead and written 5x over 6 in our um, integral or in our square roots symbol minus 1 and we take out the 6 and that leaves us with 5x over 6 quantity squared minus 1 and so that 5x over 6 is going to be our secant of theta and if we solve for x it would be 6 secant theta over 5 is equal to x the derivative of that is 6 fifths secant theta tangent theta d theta is our dx Now putting all of that together, we get 1 6, 1 over the integral of 5x over 6 quantity squared minus 1. We substitute in our secant squared theta minus 1, which gives us, uh, and our derivative, 6 fifths secant theta tangent theta d theta, which then gives us, notice that the 6's will cancel, leaving us with just 1 fifth now. We have secant theta tangent theta on top the square root of tangent squared theta on the bottom, which becomes tangent theta, which cancels and leaves us with secant theta, which was just one of our answers, so we know what the answer is. It's 1 fifth ln secant theta plus tangent theta. <clears throat> of course, the answer is going to be different from the last answer because our uh, substitution for x was different. Okay, using our two pertinent pieces of information, what is the secant of theta? 5x over 6, and what was the integral answer? 1 fifth times the ln of secant theta plus tangent theta. And knowing that secant theta is the hypotenuse over the adjacent side, we can write our triangle as 5x for the hypotenuse, 6 for 
the side adjacent to theta, and that makes the opposite side, using the Pythagorean theorem, the square root of 25x squared minus 36. Okay, next we want to um, find the tangent of theta, since that's also something we need to know. So the tangent is opposite over hypotenuse, I mean, I'm sorry, opposite over adjacent. So it would be 25, the square root of 25x squared minus 36 over 6. So going back to the bottom, we have uh, our answer of 1 fifth, the ln of 5x over 6 plus the square root of 25x squared minus 36 over 6. Again, we can make that into one fraction at our plus c, and we are done. For this example, we have x squared plus 25 under the radical, which would be like tangent squared theta plus 1. So again, we're going to have to manipulate the numbers to get 1, but uh, this is going to provide an interesting outcome. Okay, we have our two pieces of information, the tangent of theta as x over 5, and the answer 25 halves secant theta tan theta plus the natural log of the secant theta plus tan theta. So using our triangle, we have opposite over adjacent x over 5, and then the Pythagorean theorem gives us the hypotenuse is x, the square root of x squared plus 25. So our secant theta will be the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. That will be x squared plus the square root of x squared plus 25 over 5. So secant theta tan theta would be that product plus the ln of uh, the secant theta plus the tan of theta. And it's just now a matter of doing the algebra to simplify uh, as much as we can and we can simplify the first term to x times the square root of x squared plus 25 over 2 plus 25 halves times the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 25 plus x over 5 and then our constant. 